Okay, so now I'll move on to question number seven in uh, the June 2022 ST paper. So a bag contains 10 counters, each with exactly one number written on it. There are six counters with the number seven on them. There are three counters with the number eight on them. There is one counter with the number nine on it. A random sample of three counters is taken from the bag without replacement. And these counters are then put back in the bag. This process is then repeated until 20 samples have been taken. The random variable capital Y represents the number of these 20 samples that contain the counter with the number 9 on it. Okay, so you need to find the uh, mean of Y and the uh, variance of Y. Okay, so how do you find the mean of Y and the variance of Y? So basically, you need to kind of like think about the distribution of the random variable Y, right? So random variable Y represents the number of these 20 samples. You see, it represents the number of these 20 samples that contain the counter with the number nine on it because you have only one counter with number nine, right? So basically, Y represents, uh, y represents the number of samples, the number of samples with, uh, with counter number nine, okay? So basically, I think it's uh, really straightforward, right? So you should be able to understand that uh, Y follows the Y distribution because you have 20 samples. So you have a limit. You have a fixed number of trials, right? So Y follows definitely. I mean, I mean it's, uh, it should be clear. It follows a binomial distribution. The number of trials is 20 and the probability of success is the probability of getting the counter with number nine. So let's it has p for now so we can find the p value right we'll need to find the probability of p so the probability of p uh, p is uh, when you have uh, the probability of uh, having uh, you know on a sample so you know a sample has three counters right so out of the three counters one counter should have number nine on it so you need to find its probability of p so you get me so p is the probability that you that a sample uh, of, uh, a sample have, which means it has three counters it has the number nine. So we need to find that probability here and input that here. So then we can get the mean and variance by using the binomial mean and binomial variance. Okay, so how do I uh, get the probability of, uh, how do I get the value of P? All right, so let me explain you how I came to this point. Okay, so uh, first thing is you need to realize, uh, okay, so we are taking three counters, right, repeatedly from the bag. We take the, I mean, we, when we take the three counters from the bag, we do not replace. But after we take the three counters, we put it back and then we again take another three counters, right? So, so basically you do it 20 times. Okay, so that's why you have 20 samples. So you have six counters with number seven, right? Three counters with number eight, one counter with number nine, altogether six, seven, eight, nine, plus one, ten. You have ten counters, right? Altogether, we have 10 counters in total. Okay. So now I want the, uh, I know there's only one counter with number nine. And we are right now interested in out of our 20 samples, how many samples will have the number nine. So basically, for this, the P value is the probability that a sample has number nine. So what I'm going to do here is instead of working with three sets, I'll work with two sets. It's actually a lot easier. So what I'll do is I'll break this into two sets because binomial is easily, it's really easy to work as two, right? At success and failure. So success is you have only one counter with number nine. So number of counters that has nine is just one counter. And number of counters that does not contain nine. So you have six counters with number seven, three counters with number eight. They, they both don't have nine, right? So six plus three, you have nine counters that do not contain number nine. Can you see? So altogether, I have 9 plus 1. There are 10 counters in total. That's what I have written here, 10 for the total is 10 counts. Now, if I want to uh, get the probability that a particular sample, a probability that a sample uh, contains 9, the probability that a sample contains 9, okay, so P is the probability that a sample contains 9. What I did here is the easiest, the easiest technique is, okay, there are other ways as well. The easiest is you take the total probability and subtract what you don't need. So what I need is the probability that a sample contains nine. So what I'll do is I'll subtract it from the probability that a sample has no nines at all. Okay, so if there are no nines in, in, your, in a sample, so basically it means, uh, I, I mean, this is the probability there are no nines. So if I subtract it from one, so the when I subtract, uh, the rest of the probability should all be the ones that contain a nine. 
okay so probability of no nines how do i get the probability of getting no uh, the a sample doesn't have number nine so you know you take three sample three counters right so uh, when we when you say no nines i'm going to consider the three counters okay so each uh, i uh, all the three counters should not have nine so the first counter not having number nine is you know you have nine counters that do not contain nine. So I have nine chances out of 10 because there's total 10 counters in the bag. So nine chances out of 10 to actually take a counter that do not contain nine. And then what do we do after you take the first counter without replacement, you take the second counter. So second counter without to have no nines. Now you only have eight chances because you took one out of these nine, right? So now you only have eight chances out of total nine. Right, because the total is now nine when you take one counter outside of the bag. And then the next counter is also not a nine. The third counter is also not a nine. So that uh, so two of the counters are gone from here. So you have remaining seven. You have seven chances out of total eight. Right. I hope that is uh, clear. That's like a really simple uh, thing here. Okay. So basically, again, so this is the first counter. This is the first counter. It's not a nine. And 8 over 9 this is the second counter. Second counter is not 9. And this is the third counter. Third counter is not 9. Okay, remember the three counters. When you're taking the three counters one by one, that's done without replacement. Okay, so that's one sample. And then after you take the three counters, you look at the, you observe the outcome and you put it back. And you take the second sample. So I'm considering for the probability for a single sample here. Okay, so uh, this is for a sample that has no nines at all. So this is the probability that a particular sample will have no nines. Okay, so uh, so then I subtract it from one. And when I subtract from one, what happens is the rest of the probability is where I have at least, I mean, in this case, I have only one nine, right? So there will be a nine. Okay, so there are other ways of doing this. If you take the other ways, you might have to consider the paths. You might have to, you know, multiply by three because the, you need to consider the, uh, uh, the uh, how do you say, the combinations. So that's a little bit more tough. So this is the easiest uh, technique to get the probability. Okay. So to find the mean, so mean is NT. So N is 20, uh, P is 3 over 10. Right, so that gives me uh, six and variance. N T one minus three, so N is twenty. P is three over ten into one minus three over ten is seven over ten. All right, so let's simplify. So I think we get here uh, six times seven. That's forty-two over ten. So four point two. Okay, so that's the mean and variance. Okay, guys, moving on to part B. A random sample of three counters is chosen from the bag without replacement. Okay, so we're taking three counters again. Uh, basically, what we've been doing, uh, the same thing we've been doing here. So they say list all possible samples where the median of the numbers on the three counters is seven. Okay, so you know, we have some counters with number seven some counters with number eight and one counter with number nine. Okay, so I'm uh, so basically what's the median? Median is the number which is in the middle when you arrange it in ascending order. Okay, so let's write all the possible samples where the median is seven. Okay, so uh, what are the possible samples? So the first sample, I can take the first sample as seven, the second sample as seven and third sample as seven. So obviously, if, because I have six counters with number seven, so it's possible for me to take Three counters with number seven on it, right? That's possible. So if this, for this particular sample, median is seven. And another sample with median seven. So uh, uh, we can now combine seven and eight. So how do I do it? So if I take the first counter with number seven, the second counter with number seven, and the third one with number eight, that should work, right? So seven, two sevens and eight. But uh, so also now the next thing is, from this particular sample, you can consider different combinations of this guy, right? Seven, seven, eight can also be written. So here, the first count is seven. The second count is seven. The third count is eight. Now I can change this and get other possible samples, right? So I can get seven, eight, seven. The other one is eight, seven, seven. 
All right. So basically, these are all po different possibilities, right? So the first count, the second count, the third count. By end of the day, median, when you are getting the median, you just arrange it in ascending order and find the middle figure. Okay, so the middle figure for all of them, when you arrange in ascending order, is seven. But these are three possible, different possible samples. Okay. All right. So this is one option. Uh, so what's the next one? Can I go for seven, eight, eight? I think you realize that this is wrong, right? Why is it wrong? When you arrange in ascending order, this is already in ascending order. The median is eight. The middle is eight. So I want median to be uh, seven. Okay, so this, this doesn't work. So in order for the median to be seven, I think you need to realize we need to have at least two sevens, right? I need to have at least two sevens. All three should be seven. Otherwise, the median will not be seven. The other option I have is seven, seven, nine. That's the other option, right? So you can change it seven, nine, seven. Nine seven seven. These are the only options. So these are all the possible samples where the median of the three counters will be seven. Okay, so that's the answer for part B. Okay, moving on to the last part. Uh, find the sampling distribution of the median of the numbers on the three counters. Okay, they want us to find the uh, sampling distribution. So basically, what's the sampling distribution? All the possible uh, median values, sample distribution of the median means I need to get all the possible uh, values of the median and uh, their respective probability. Okay, so uh, what are the possible values I can get for the median? <clears throat> okay, so what are all the possible samples and what are the possible answers I can get for the median? So you can see here, uh, so in part B, I listed down all the samples. So they are the median is seven, right? So for all these samples, median is seven. Okay, so what about uh, other samples? Because you can create other samples as well, right? So what about other samples? So uh, so let's consider a few uh, cases. So because you need to see what are the other possible mediums. Are there other possible mediums? Because we need to consider other possible mediums and get the total probability. So, you know, here, so if all, uh, so let's, I went with median seven, right? So these are all the ones with median seven. So let's now try with median eight. I think you realize that here, we, when you're taking three samples, you will only get a whole number median values, right? So median can be seven. So let's consider median eight. I think you can see median, uh, uh, okay, before I go for median eight, let's think, is it possible to get a median of nine? What about median of nine? Is it? possible for us to construct a sample with median 9? What do you think? So think you can see median 9 is not possible, right? Why? Because there's only one counter with number 9. You're taking three counters. If you're taking three counters, I mean, uh, whatever the option you take, 7, 8, 9, or 7, 7, 9, or 8, 8, 9. I mean, you can see regardless which way you go with now, because there's only one 9. There's only one 9. Right? So, regardless whichever combination of counters you take, when you arrange it in ascending order, 9 will never be the median. Right? So, you can see that uh, the, so in that case, our median options are going to be limited to what? Just 7 and 8. Right? Because you're taking 3 counters. So, either the median is going to be 7 or it's going to be 8. Okay? So, uh, we only have two options. So, actually, it makes things very easy for you. So, if you want, you can list down all the samples with median 8, but you need to make sure you write down all of it without missing any of it. Okay, or else the easiest option is let's just get the uh, probability for median of 7. So, I want to get the sample and distribution, right? So, sample and distribution for the median. So, I know medians are all going to be, medians are going to be 7 and 8. That's it, right? That's it. Median will be? Seven or eight. Okay, so I just need to get the sample and distribution. So how do I do that? Okay, so probability. Capital M equals simple M. Let's say median as simple M. Okay, so how do I get the probability of seven? So you can see I have uh, each path here, right? Seven, seven, seven. So these are all the options. Uh, I'm writing the paths that I had in part B. These three were together, right? And seven, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, seven. Okay. So what we do is 
Okay. So I'm going to get the probability of all these paths. And I'm going to get the probability of all these paths and simply add them, right? Because if I add all the probabilities of this path, I get the total probability that the median becomes 7. So, uh, so getting a probability, uh, getting a counter with number 7. So how many counters are there with number 7? There are 6 counters. Six counters with number seven, so six out of ten, right? Because there are altogether ten counters. Six out of ten, and you know we take these samples without replacement. So which means when I take one counter with number seven, so that means there will be one less now inside. So next counter, next probability of taking again a counter with number seven should be five out of nine. Again, taking number seven should be four out of eight. All right. Okay, so that's the probability of this path. Okay, now let's go for the next path. So taking a seven, seven, and eight. So if I take a pro the probability of getting a 7 counter with number 7, I have 6 chances, okay? So there are 6 counters with number 7, okay? So 6 out of 10. Again, taking the second counter being number 7. So I already took one count out, so which means that for the second counter to be number 7, I have 5 chances out of 9. And the third counter is a 8 now. So if the third counter is a 8, uh, so 8 are all remaining inside, right? So no issues. So there are 3 uh, three eight, three counters with number 8. So 3 out of Eight, however, right? Because you only have eight counters remaining inside. And if you take the probability of all these other parts, you will see they are exactly the same. The numerators will just change, but if, uh, everything else is the same, which means we all these three parts have the exact same probability. So I'll just multiply by three. Okay, so these are some basic stuff, right? So you have the probability because these parts are exact same combinations, two sevens and one eight. So uh, get the probability of one path and multiply by three. Similarly, here's for 779. Seven, so probability of getting the 7, you have 6 chances out of 10 because 6 counters are, are there with number 7. So 6 chances out of total 10 to get the first count as number 7. Then that 7 is gone. The second counter being a 7, now you have only 5 chances out of 9. Right? And the third counter being a number 9, you know, there's only one counter with number 9. So 1 chance out of 8. Right? And then you multiply it by 3 because there are three possibilities and then what we do is we get these answers and we add them all right so we add all these probabilities so that gives me the probability my median is seven okay so you need to type this in the cal and add them and you should get the probability of median is seven and since we know that uh, there are only two values seven and eight you can get the probability that the median is eight just by taking this probability of seven and subtracting it from one or else if you really want to check on it you can write all the samples with median 8, right? You need to make sure you write every one though. And then you need to, uh, again, calculate the probabilities and you can get the value here. So if you add the two probabilities, it must sum to 1, okay? So here you, uh, of course, the probability of getting the median 8 correct, of course, depends on whether you got this correct, whether you wrote all the samples here. So if you cannot miss any sample here, if you miss any, then this will be wrong, right? Okay, so uh, how much is the uh, total probability here? So this, when you type in the calculator, you should get 2 over 3, which I've written here. And this probability for 8 should be 1 minus 2 over 3, which gives me the answer as 1 over 3. All right, so that's uh, the shorter way of doing it. Or else, as I described earlier, you could write all the uh, samples with median 8 and do the exact same calculation and get the answer as 1 over 3 here. All right. So this is the easier way, the time the time saving method. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's the end of this question.